It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful, rainy, cloudy, overcast Lauderdale by the sea. Still kind of nice and cool out there, though. At least it's not hot. Well, got the live Miami cam up here. This cam is an amazing camera, folks. Uh, if you ever want to just relax and sit and look at some beautiful fish, I just saw a large angel fish, like purple colors and all kinds of cool things. Uh, just go buy this camera right here. And no, it's not a fish tank. It's a real uh, underwater cam down in Miami. And go figure, there is things living in the water in Miami. <laughs> so <laughs> us Broward people like to tease the Dade people about this kind of stuff. Well, let's take a look at spot prices here. And I'm going to uh, reduce the camera here and see what happens. And uh, we'll shut that off for now so we don't use up any bandwidth. Let's do a quick uh, spot prices. We'll check and see what current spot prices here, courtesy of CCE certified coin exchange and uh, uh, I like the static price here it doesn't move all, all around the place I can put up a page up that changes constantly in case you're curious about my spot prices here uh, it is a static page it doesn't update unless I update it uh, but it makes it easier for me to talk while it's not changing constantly and uh, just for that I'll show you how I update I just hit the update button up there uh, there is a uh, uh, if you see here something that uh, refreshes every 30 seconds I can click that but for all intents and purposes for what we're doing let's discuss this uh, current gold price 1779.11 down about five bucks from uh, um, I guess uh, last night, uh, we'll take a look, or is that from New York Open on uh, Friday? Anyway, we'll look at overnight markets in a moment here. 1776.91 is a low, high of 1788, um, nearing that $1,800 mark. It keeps moving up there and getting whacked back down again. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but I, I suspect uh, there's some kind of monkey hammer going on there. Uh, currently, silver at 20 tweet, 20 tweet. <laughs> 22.31 per ounce. Uh, a low of 22.16. Looks like it was trying to test that uh, sub-22 area, but has not as of yet, or will it? I'm not sure. We'll discuss that in a little bit. A high of 22.62. So silver's back to its 25 and 50 cent ranges. Um, again, this is not untypical, and seems to be a little tug of war going on out there. I think uh, the physical is uh, starting to wag the uh, dog, which is the paper markets a little bit. And uh, we'll discuss that again in a moment. We'll look at the 24-hour charts. Uh, and platinum 932, man, the platinum is just so cheap, in my opinion, of course. And uh, of course, everything I say on these videos uh, are my opinion, by the way. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money or your investments. However, what I'm trying to do is pass along what I have learned for years and years, and hopefully you can make use of that on their own. Uh, again, <clears throat> this is not financial advice. Um, and this is not uh, me telling you where to put your money, but boy, I think platinum is cheap. That's my personal opinion. Uh, let, we'll take a look at, well, we don't have the ranges on that 24 hours. Maybe I'll do that down the road here, but about a $25 range there. Uh, again, like in the price of platinum, prat, platinum, and uh, talking like Elmer Fudd today. <laughs> and uh, I think it's a really good buy. And the premiums are pla on uh, platinum are reasonable too. It's not insane. There's no insane premiums on platinum as of yet. Uh, which tells me that the retail end of it is not really buying it up much. But again, platinum, you know, for every ounce of uh, gold we sell, we, you know, we, you know, for every hundred ounces of gold we sell, maybe uh, or more, uh, we probably sell one ounce of platinum and uh, palladium even less. So it's a market we don't talk about, and it's not a market that's heavily participated in by retail players. It's a very m small marketplace. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, twenty-four hour charts and uh, see where the monkey hammering takes place. This is 24-hour uh, gold spot prices. Um, uh, again, kind of choppy sideways, sideways motion with gold, a little bit down here if you're taking a look in New York. Um, a little bit, you know, up after uh, New York opens for a little bit. You know, it looks like it got kind of monkey hammered in London, I'm assuming, and not New York Globex markets. But again, I can't tell what line this represents. Was that trade done in London or New York Globex? Again, anyone that can answer my question out here that's smarter than me, please, uh, or at least knows this answer, please let me know uh, how we can tell where that trade was done. Was this trade right here on this upside done in London, or was this trade on the upside done on the New York Globex? Uh, and New York Globex is a 23-hour market. I am suspect of any trades done on New York Globex, uh, especially when it comes to precious metals, uh, because it is a Comex-owned, CME Group-owned uh, 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 trading place. So, and then London, you can't trust, let's trust them anymore, but uh, uh, the consistency uh, in London and the trades is probably a little more uh, opaque. Maybe not, I don't know. 
Well, let's take a look at the uh, silver prices. Uh, good opportunity again, sub $1,800 in my opinion is a good buy. Uh, again, that's just my opinion. Make of it uh, what you will. If you'd like to uh, uh, jump in at this level, then I'd say buy the frickin' dips. Um, I think overall we are in a bull market with gold for sure and silver. Uh, by the way, got some cool things to talk about on this show. I got a call. Um, again, not going to give up everything. We're going to go over markets here, the different markets. Uh, got a really interesting thing for those folks that are holding on to IRAs and are holding on to themselves. You know, I've heard there are people out there that an IRA, someone else is supposed to hold on for you. There are people out there that are holding on to their IRAs, and there's some bad news, folks. I've got some bad news for you. Uh, if you're holding on to your IRA, uh, you need to uh, back up and uh, do something about it quickly. Uh, and we're also going to go into uh, Ted Butler. A uh, great article written by Ted Butler talks about how these markets are manipulated in silver. I'm going to read that to you and go over some points. I really like the guy. I think he's probably, when it comes to manipulation in the silver market, okay, the silver market, um, probably the smartest man out there can tell you exactly how it's done, who does it, and, uh, and why, more or less. And why is really just greed. It's not because they hate us. <laughs> well, let's kind of finish up with what we're doing here. Oh, tips and complaints. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through with you how to file a complaint with the CFTC. It's easy as hell to do. You can do it in a couple minutes. Uh, and then file a complaint with the CME. If you believe, as I do, that these markets are being manipulated by big uh, 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 commercial banks and such. Um, <clears throat> well, let's move out of here. 24 hour, well, let's take a look first where the markets got monkey hammered with silver. 24-hour uh, market shows us that, of course, where silver monkey, there is December 6th, there's our black line, which is, uh, this is start last night in the opening markets. Uh, Hong Kong, I'm not quite sure. I believe it's Hong Kong uh, would be the opening markets here. And then London or New York Lobex, which trades 24 hours. But I suspect, now here, this is totally speculative on my, my and, and it's totally speculative on my, I, you know, my thoughts. I have noticed a little pattern going on that silver has been getting monkey hammered in the early, early morning markets. Uh, not New York markets, but when Hong Kong uh, and New York uh, markets are open. Uh, take a look at this. This is either in Hong Kong or the New York Globex markets. Understanding how silver is manipulated and understanding that there are gold and silver trades done on the New York Globex market, and in the past there have been huge gold deals. Now, I'm not sure about silver, but I'm going to assume silver as well. Huge gold deals unloaded in New York Globex in the middle of the night when no one's trading simply with the uh, 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 simply to knock the markets down, simply to manipulate the markets down. It's kind of like a spoofing. And it's done in Globex. I believe the same thing. I could be wrong. Again, I've asked folks out here to tell me, you know, if you, can, if you know how to identify when this trade was done that caused this market to go down overall, was that done in London? Was it done in Hong Kong or New York? I suspect this pattern that I've seen, late night monkey hammering of silver, is being done on the New York Globex market by the same crooks, again, this is my opinion, by the same crooks uh, at, at Comex. Uh, again, simply my opinion and speculative uh, uh, at best, all right? Uh, however, I've usually always had good gut feelings about this thing, and I, just, and I, I just don't believe that this market uh, got monkey hammered in Hong Kong. Uh, I believe that it got monkey hammered in New York Globex, and if that's the case, um, probably uh, most likely a manipulative, in my opinion, uh, a fraudulent uh, uh, use of these markets. Uh, again, we'll talk about where you can file complaints with CFTC and COMEX. Uh, there's nothing illegal about filing complaints, and uh, most of us feel that, and rightfully so, uh, that these markets are being heavily manipulated. And the CFTC and the COMEX uh, uh, doesn't, and CME Group, who owns COMEX, does nothing about it. Uh, let's take a look at markets today. Uh, by the way, great opportunities to buy physical folks. Keep buying that physical gold and silver here. And uh, uh, these uh, central bankers, uh, not central, sorry, commercial bankers, COMEX, uh, are really allowing you to buy physical at much better prices. And uh, they're just adding to their woes, really, because the other thing that the problem, oh, by the way, didn't for, forgot to mention, I did have uh, uh, an investigator from the CME group give me a call, and I gave him my peace of mind. Uh, and I wasn't mean to him. He was a very polite fellow named Mr. Reddington. I forget, Eldridge Reddington or something? Investigator from CME. They actually called me, but I'll get into that in a little bit as well. Um, I was really surprised, too. Uh, I, I heard it's very unusual for them to call. So uh, I'll, get, I'll get into what they kind of said to me, and uh, I'll talk about uh, what I wrote to uh, the CME group and what I've also written to uh, CFTC. 
and I'll show you how to do it. Well, let's look at the, uh, again, monkey hammering, monkey hammering, and more monkey hammering as we see right here. And what, in what market? The silver market. Uh, again, we'll talk about what Ted Butler has to say about this in a moment. I think you're gonna find it very interesting. Uh, market watch, let's look at the, uh, the circus here that's called Wall Street. Uh, Dow at uh, 468 points up, blah, 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 blah. All right, um, just absolutely amazes me. Uh, you know, I, I'm not anti-stock. In fact, uh, I am really uh, looking forward to a period where I feel comfortable jumping into stocks. And I think that'll probably, you know, when the stock market crashes, not a matter of if, we all know it will. Uh, I don't know what it's going to look like. It's, will it be an overnight thing? Probably not. Uh, they, hopefully, central banks and governments have gotten smart enough to uh, prevent these things from happening overnight. Uh, but maybe not. Uh, uh, will it be a, something that happens over the course of months and months and years? Possibly as well. But that could provide a good opportunity to buy good value stocks and things. So I'm not anti-stock. I'm just looking for opportunity, and I'm waiting for the market to drop when I start doing that. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin, BTC. Uh, boy, man, they've been having a rough go at it. I'm not going to beat up on the Bitcoin folks because I know exactly how this feels, too. And uh, uh, for you BTC uh, uh, supporters out there, you know, in my opinion, this is as soon as you got the large entities into your Bitcoin market, you know, when it was a small group of uh, 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 small players and it was uh, not just small players, but when it was a small group of tech people and, and people that were savvy to Bitcoin, there was no uh, uh, corporate, there was no financial corporations, entities involved with Bitcoin. Um, it was probably a super fun place and ultimately, you know, the crowd kind of determined where it was going to go. Uh, but no longer is the crowd determined where Bitcoin goes, all right? So all you Bitcoin uh, hodlers out there, it's got to be a pretty sad situation because you're seeing the same thing we've seen in silver and gold markets for years, which is uh, blatant manipulation of, of these markets. And that's exactly what you're going to see in Bitcoin, unfortunately. I said it a year or two years ago, uh, and you are seeing it for sure. Uh, again, when you get the likes of JP and all these other people involved with your markets, and here's the issue, the poor you know, your Bitcoin hodlers have out there your, is that uh, there is very little regulation in these markets. There's no regulating authority. Now that you get the whales in there, and some Bitcoiners were all happy about the whales. See, see, our market's legit now. As soon as I saw that, I said, no, your market's fucked now. So, uh, but you got the whales in there, you're screwed. So we're just small fish, folks. Um, <clears throat> however, the caveat is, just like gold and silver, if you know how the game is played, you know who the uh, players are, you know how they rig the game uh, and all that stuff, uh, of course the game is rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. So if you are a good Bitcoin trader and you've done nothing but made mostly good trades and you're able to see where it's going, good for you. Um, uh, because the one thing that Bitcoin doesn't have like gold has, it doesn't have a 5,000 year track record. So the volatility and what you own if Bitcoin just goes to nothing is really zip. You don't own anything. You don't even get a bar for it or a piece of paper. Uh, so a very, very risky speculative uh, uh, market here uh, that you're in. So be, you better be able to play it well. For, for people that think you're going to just stick money in it and walk away from it, very risky in my opinion, folks. You know, the nice thing about gold and silver, again, history, history, history. It's not made by man like Bitcoin and stock markets. It's made by stars imploding neutron stars. And, uh, you know, you can also say that's God himself for, for my religious friends out there. So made by stars, which are made by God if you're religious. Um, uh, so there you go. Not made by some guy named Satoshi. Uh, and again, I'm not knocking the market. I'm just saying you better know what the F you're doing right now. So, you know, there's, well, I better not make the comparison. I was going to, but I'm going to leave this alone for right now. Let's take a look at uh, uh, recently, I just, uh, in my new Seeking Alpha account, I did get a paid account here. I like these guys. They have some good stuff. In fact, we have not looked at latest news. I'm not going to read anything if I see it here, but uh, I'm just kind of curious what uh, anything new there. Uh, Golden Stocks, Future Ride, Do or Die for Miners. Uh, there's some good stuff here. Comics, Gold at the Crossroads. Uh, tomorrow, I'll tell you what, tomorrow we'll read some Seeking Alpha uh, articles here. Today we've got uh, Ted Butler to read and something really uh, in, well, kind of in interesting and sad for uh, some folks that have done their own IRAs. Uh, consumables, uh, uh, basically here, I'm going to show you what I've added in here. Not, I'm not trading any of this stuff. This is not, I'm not advocating. And in fact, I'm sure most of you out here watching me know more about stock markets and bond markets than I do. Uh, for sure, and definitely crypto as well. You know, my specialty is the uh, 
uh, physical precious metals, retail and wholesale. That's my specialty. Uh, that's it, all right? Uh, not, not for seeing the future, not for, see, you know, not for reading charts. That's not my specialty. I'm a buyer and seller of uh, precious metal gold. So I do have direct connections with uh, wholesalers all over the country, also uh, 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 retail folks. I'm, I'm dealing with them all the time, and uh, you learn a lot from that. And uh, I look at markets every day, too. So, you, you know, once you look at markets after 30 years, you start to see patterns, and I see them all the time. Uh, I'm going to open up these and show you what I'm looking at as far as, uh, 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 and again, I've encouraged some of you guys out there to uh, uh, give me some ideas on a few things. And uh, let's take a look. Here's some stocks that I have in consumable. And by the way, for folks that have given me some ideas and things, for, um, just because I haven't put them up here doesn't mean that I don't respect the idea or, uh, uh, you know, or the uh, suggestion. Uh, I'm just kind of going to keep it to a narrow group of things right here. And uh, uh, I may add or subtract some things as I go along as well. But uh, I'd sure kind of be curious what you guys think. Uh, consumables, that's my own kind of name for things like uh, uh, Australian Seafood, who is one of the largest seafood purveyors out there. Uh, BurgerFi, who is a local company who I think have really got cameraed in there. Great little local burger joint that I think is going to be big one day. Uh, and Leroy Seafood Group. Don't ask, maybe because I'm a fisherman. That's why <laughs> I was looking at seafood, and I like seafood. Uh, but I'm wondering, seafood stocks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Who's going to benefit from that? Uh, health and death stocks, I know that sounds weird. Uh, service Corporation is a funeral service corporation. I was looking at them, and I haven't really looked at health companies yet. I probably should. Uh, if I was smart, I would have got, got into the uh, um, uh, people that uh, create uh, uh, all these vaccines and stuff like that. Those stocks have done very well uh, for the last couple of years. If I was smart, I shouldn't say that. And of course, here's all my miners. Some of you may recognize this. Amark is not a miner. Uh, however, they've done very well. Uh, so I kind of taken a look at their stock. And yes, I hate Facebook. That's the only reason I put them down so I could see them in red. So <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen. Personally, I hate them. Uh, but uh, DWAC, I know. I know, but I'm just kind of curious where that stock goes and Google, Twitter. Uh, so I'll be adding some more things on here as well. And uh, that's social media, I guess, and technology. I've got Apple on there only because most of my products are Apple. So if you got some suggestions and ideas, give them to me. I'd like to take a look at them. And uh, we'll get to those. Again, not a stock report. So let me kind of get through that. I don't want any of you get bored with uh, me talking about stocks and bonds and something I don't know a lot about. I just thought it would be fun that we do it together. Uh, for those of you who know and those that you don't, you know, I can share what I don't know with you too. Uh, hey, listen, this is really scary. Uh, I have personally met uh, a few customers in the past that are uh, self-directing their own IRAs, okay? I always thought it was, uh, I saw this come out, you know, like three or four years ago. And I'm going to read this article in a moment. Um, IRAs typically have always had to been held by some custodian, which could not be you, all right? Had to be held by a custodian of, of someone that's not you, all right? Um, I think some years ago, some guy came up with some plan where you could self-direct your own IRAs. They did YouTube videos. It was bad advice. So apparently it's, it was really bad advice because uh, guess what's happening here? Let's take a, a read on this. This is in Wall Street Journal. Uh, I used to have a Wall Street Journal uh, uh, subscription, so I, I could have read it to you at the time. But you know what? I'm glad I don't. They suck. Uh, they're just another corporate single point narrative. Uh, uh, spewers. Spewers, how do you like that? All right, it's official. Owners of individual retirement accounts with assets invested in gold and silver can't store them in a safe at their home. Uh, my understanding, some people were creating their own trust and somehow, uh, you know, being their own custodians. Again, let's keep reading here. So ruled the judge in a recent tax court case, Andrew McNulty at L versus Commissioner. The decision will cost McNulty and his wife, Donna, dearly. Taxes of nearly, wow, wow, $270,000 on the 730, almost a third of it, of IRS assets plus penalties likely to exceed $50,000. Uh, the ruling disallows a scheme that was heavily promoted several years ago when a radio and internet ads touted, I remember this, uh, the benefits of using IRA assets to buy gold and silver and then store them at home or in a safe deposit box. Promoters based pitches on perceived ambiguity in the law, despite warnings from Internal Revenue Service and legal specialists. Well, you have to have the Wall Street Journal to read the rest of this, but this is pretty much self-explanatory, folks. Um, I said this years ago uh, when I had customers coming in and tell me they were going to self-direct their, some of them, I think one or two told me I was an idiot and I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, you know, I was polite about it too. I just said, I don't believe you can do that. I don't think it's right. Uh, you're going to get in trouble. Uh, but you know, for a long time, I knew that this was an issue uh, because first off, um, let me read this little part. The ruling disallows a scheme that was heavily promoted uh, several years ago when radio and internet ads touted the benefits of using IRS to buy gold and silver and store them at home in your own. And that's exactly what it was. Uh, promoters base pitches on a perceived ambiguity in the law, okay? Ambiguity in the law. Um, and uh, I knew that, I knew that. And one thing that I did know for sure, uh, that um, a judge, you know, you're going to tax court for it, folks. You gotta remember, in tax court, you have no rights. In tax court, you are guilty until you prove yourself innocent. Not many people know this. And when you go to tax court with the IRS, it's not like criminal courts. In fact, it's, it's really uh, very draconian. Uh, when you go to a tax court, you have to prove that you are not guilty. It's not the other way around. Not many people know this. Most people think, well, the court system, it works like the court. No, tax courts don't work like that. They make the rules, they can change the rules, and they can do whatever the fuck they want. So they can really screw you in tax court. And uh, more or less that ambiguity that uh, people took, a, you know, took advantage of or tried to um, would have been okay if it was backed by real law, not tax law. I'm talking about real law. If it was backed by a constitution and real law, uh, you'd probably be okay. But the fact that y you're fighting tax law, and tax law is ever-changing depending on who wants to uh, 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 um, define what it means, okay? So uh, that's what ambiguity means to uh, uh, the IRS and tax people is that uh, they can change the rules at any time and uh, or just say what the rules they think the rules are. And I can, cl I can show you some clear examples of that, but I'm not here to beat up on the IRS. Uh, they already have enough people that do that on a daily basis. So yeah, anyone out there that has a self-directed IRA and you're holding your own stuff, man, you better start getting a hold of an attorney or a tax person or figuring out how to unwind this because you're going to get screwed really badly. Uh, and uh, sorry to say that. Uh, good articles always on GATA.org. If you're a new stacker, make sure that you uh, uh, subscribe to this and put this on your bookmark bar. And uh, uh, they discuss mostly about gold manipulation. Uh, got it? GATA.org uh, doesn't really talk about silver manipulation, where I think most of the, you know, the most manipulated market uh, in COMEX is uh, the silver market. I think in the United States <laughs> it feels that way. Uh, gold now is a whole different story. GATA.org would be the experts on what they call the gold manipulation, and they believe that it's done by central bankers and other things. You can read that right here. But if you invested in gold or silver, and again, if you're a silver investor, you need to watch the price of gold. Wherever gold goes, ultimately silver will. So if you're a silver stacker and you have no desire in buying gold, uh, which you should buy some gold, you should mix it up, even if it's a small amount. Um, you need to have GATA.org on your website, and you need to realize that uh, um, um, you got to know that you got to follow the price of gold because, that, again, silver will follow that. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to read you an article here by uh, uh, Ted Butler, uh, handsome fellow that he is. <laughs> uh, and uh, this just came out December 3rd. You know, this is done on SilverSeek. I got to give SilverSeek some credit. I'm not quite sure what they do, but they've been around for years. Uh, and it's a, a, a site I respect. You know what? Maybe I'm going to start to uh, take a look at SilverSeek more often. I, I, their articles come up, and mostly I see them uh, because I'm reading Ted Butler's articles. But now I subscribe to Ted's stuff on uh, Butler Research. I pay a subscription fee, made me a much smarter person. And uh, let's read what Ted has to say here on December 3rd, uh, just a few days ago. Uh, of course, everybody remembers this song. Sign, sign, everywhere, sign. Blocking out the scenery, breaking my mind. Do this, don't do that. Can't you read the sign? <laughs> the way he starts out. Loved had played the song for you, but I'm not that uh, technically capable to do it. Uh, I am technically capable enough to take a sip of coffee here. Give me one sec. Hmm. Okay, let's read Ted's article here. And um, that was from a teenage song of rebellion some 50 years ago by the Five Man Electric Band uh, from Canada, I believe, protesting the no shirt, no suge, no service notices appearing in many fast food joints back in the day. And yes, it was a simpler time, uh, absolutely a simpler time. I was thinking about the other day is how much simpler times were. Uh, when you start watch old movies, you know what I mean? It's just, anyways, I digress. Let's read Ted's article. I'd like to talk about different signs today. And let me see if I can blow this up, make it, yeah, there we go. I can read this a little bit easier. Uh, spe specifically, the signs I see proclaiming that some highly unusual 
something highly unusual is occurring in the silver markets. The most visible sign of all, the price of silver seems wildly out of sync with other signs to the point that either the price of the other signs must be wrong or the price is saying loud and clear that there is plenty of silver available to the market, otherwise the price wouldn't have been consistently lower all year long. On the other hand, there are many more signs suggesting just the opposite, namely that there isn't enough silver to go around and that we may be on the verge of actual physical shortage in one form of an, uh, one form of silver, a thousand ounce bars that matters most to price. What are these signs? Uh, and I'm going to go on here. I'm going to you know I'm going to jump in and make some comments myself. But a lot of this stuff is uh, things that we have talked about on our videos for over a year now, uh, may, almost two years now, going on two years in April. Uh, we've talked about this stuff here uh, on physical shortages. And, and Ted gets a little more specific about the thousand ounce bars. Let's talk about this and read Ted's article here. Uh, first, there are signs in retail forms of silver in the persistently higher premiums and delayed delivery times that have prevailed for the bulk of the year. The highest premiums I can recall, and uh, I agree with that. Uh, yes, I know, well, actually the highest premiums I saw were in 2008 when the market collapsed and there was nothing available. Uh, highest uh, uh, delay times was in 2008, but Ted's basically right. The premiums got really, really high in 2020, and they're still pretty high. Uh, so let me continue, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I know that retail forms of silver are different from prices for 1,000 ounce bars. Uh, I'm glad to see Ted makes that distinction. But to dismiss out of hand what the unusually persistent high premiums to delayed delivery times may be signaling may be wrong. After all, with current premiums, it is possible that retail forms of silver are being converted into 1,000 ounce bars and not the opposite. Over time, this does matter, okay? Along these same lines, the highest premium of all retail forms of silver are the premiums on Silver Eagles, the flagship retail form of silver produced by the U.S. Mint or should I say former flagship products, since the U.S. Mint has seen fit to unilaterally curtail production of what has been the world's most popular silver bullion coin. That's no longer the case for the first time in the 35-year history of the Mint's bullion program. And Ted's going to go into right here why. It's hard to fully comprehend why the U.S. Mint has seen fit to restrict the production of silver eagles. Uh, I'm going to pause here real quick. Uh, most of you know that uh, the U.S. Mint uh, has not been producing silver eagles part of this year, uh, and uh, they've also, uh, I think they're discontinued right now, when they should still be producing. Uh, they are mandated by Congress to produce these silver eagles. So, um, you know, there's speculation out there, and people believe that uh, uh, the Mint was told to uh, uh, stop or slow down in their production of silver eagles because of a shortage of silver out there, and they were going to only exasperate the problem. All right, let me continue here. Um, it's hard to fully comprehend why the U.S. Mint has seen fit to restrict production of silver eagles, since the other world's mints, such as Royal Canadian Mint, have had no problem producing and competing coins, particularly since there is a public law requiring the U.S. Mint to produce enough silver eagles to meet demand. But that in no way diminishes the clear sign that something is quite fishy with the lack of silver eagle productions. Uh, you know, it didn't occur to me that's the one thing I missed this year. Not the one thing, I missed a lot of things, sorry. Uh, however, people had caught that, that, uh, you know, there's, there's got to be a bigger reason why the U.S. Mint had stopped producing silver eagles. And, and I didn't really learn of this until recently, so I believe this is probably true. Uh, Ted goes on to say, other signs that the price sign is sending a false message is that the first, at least two well-known and publicly traded silver miners, First Majestic and Endeavor Silver, have withheld some silver productions rather than sell it at what each considered to be a depressed price. Um, and again, I'm going to just cut here and say that, uh, uh, I, you know, that's a wonderful idea. I really think more mines and miners out there should get involved with uh, uh, First Majestic, Majestic and Endeavor Silver and start holding their production, gold and silver mines. You know, those guys have a lot of power behind them. Unfortunately, they are run by engineers and people that don't quite understand the manipulation or the economics of what's happening. Uh, again, most miners are run by engineers and, uh, you know, those kind of people. They're not run by financial uh, folks. Uh, so I go on here. Regardless of whether their actions will pro pro prove successful, there are no other commodities that I'm aware of where producers, let me re rephrase this. Remember this when you file a complaint with COMEX or CFTC. Regardless of whether their actions will prove successful, key words here, there are no other commodities that I'm aware of where producers are withholding production due to perceived low prices. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not what you want to tell CFTC. I mean, I was getting to a different point, and I kind of got ahead of myself. Uh, but no less, um, he's right. There's no other, uh, you know, c people that produce corn, soy, and all that, they don't hold their product. 
um, it, it, because they feel prices depressed and wait for higher prices. I think this has only ever happened in silver. Maybe you will, though. Never thought about that. Uh, but no less, he's got a very good point there. Uh, due to perceived lower prices, making this clear and inconvertible sign that the price of silver is out of kilter with these two miners, and I'm convinced with other silver miners as well. And, and Ted believes that. I believe that, again, is something uh, uh, we've talked about for uh, quite some time. I think uh, the idea of miners uh, uh, boycotting it is something uh, we thought we brought up about a year ago, and again, not an original thought on our part. Uh, then there is a formation of the grassroots movement of the Wall Street. Hey, there you go, silver apes. <laughs> Ted mentions you here, the grassroots movements of the Wall Street Silver Reddit Group, which came into existence early this year for the sole purpose of encouraging investment in silver price, precisely because it was too cheap. If that isn't a sign that the price is wrong, then nothing is. Uh, I concur 100% with that. Uh, let's go con continue on here. I'm going to take a sip of coffee as well. Um, give me one sec. Hmm. Finally. There are clear signs of an incredibly robust investment demand in the statistics from the world's leading silver ETFs. Uh, let me pause here again. Uh, a lot of folks uh, uh, not familiar with uh, Ted Butler. Ted Butler is of the firm belief that the ETFs are, are allocated. They do have the silver and such, and, uh, um, which kind of surprises me because, you know, there is, was talk, and, and my thought even is that the ETFs were probably unallocated and uh, 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 over-leveraged quite a bit. Uh, however, Ted does talk about how the ETFs are back. That's something you'd have to read. It's a separate subject, but let me go on here. Uh, of which, SLV is the largest. Over the past year and a half, some 500 million ounces of physical silver in 1,000-ounce bar form have been bought and deposited in the world's silver ETFs, the most in history, with no real signs of investor liquidation. What makes, uh, and again, I'm going to cut here for a second, as far as ETFs and uh, uh, liquidation, uh, capitulation by uh, investors in silver, um, I've been doing this since, uh, again, 1977. Uh, I have not seen, you know, 2012, we had a, almost a $50 per ounce silver price. I sold prior to 2012 millions and millions and millions, I don't even, I don't even know how much, of, of, of dollars in uh, silver and gold to uh, local whales. And, you know, remember, we live in South Florida, there's a lot of rich folk down here. Uh, I've sold a lot of precious metals. Uh, I've yet to see any capitulation, even though those people bought and it went up to 50 and it went down to 15. I have seen very little capitulation. Uh, in fact, I have seen nothing but buying since 2008, nothing but consistent buying on the retail form of it. Uh, I haven't seen heavy capitulation at all. In fact, I mean, at worst, I saw the buying slow down for a little bit. Premiums went to hell. A lot of product on the market. That was around 2014 and 15. Then all of a sudden, 2016, the buyers picked up again. Again, no retail capitulation. And Ted points out here that there's no ETF capitulation out there as well, uh, or very little. And I'm going to continue. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut into Ted's stuff. Just some things I want to add here. Um, uh, what makes this all more remarkable is the fact that most investors buy as prices rise and sell when prices fall. But here we are seeing something else. Namely, investors essentially, oh, he brings this up, holding strong in the face of what has been pretty punk price action in silver, which not only is down more than assets, most assets for the year, but is only, the only asset down more than 50% from its high of 10 and 40 years ago. Think about that. Uh, the only thing I can see that the, would cause such unusual collective investor behavior is a widespread intuit, intuitive recognition that the price of silver is too low. Again, if that's not a sign that contradicts the price, then I don't know what it is. Uh, Ted points this out, and he's talking specifically about ETFs having capitulated. Uh, my observation as a retail uh, a bullion guy, or a physical bullion guy, is that I have not seen any capitulation, even since 2012, I've not seen the capitulation that I expected, especially after 2012 markets. In fact, even though they slowed down again up into 14, 15, 16, uh, very little capitulation since 2016 at all, uh, mostly buyers, mostly buyers. And even through 2012, 13, 14, 15, when metals got hammered down to those lower prices, all we were seeing is buyers. Uh, so Ted's absolutely correct on that. It's very similar to what we see in the uh, physical retail markets. Uh, finally, there has been a literal explosion of independent internet commentary pointing quite specifically to the blatant comic silver manipulation. And uh, folks, this is the most powerful thing out there is that the word has gotten out. Um, it's, it's, there's no putting, putting the uh, 
uh, a cat back in the bag or uh, whatever <laughs> the phrase is. I guess I think I screwed that one up. There's no, there's no putting uh, uh, a Pandora's box back, you know what I mean, trying to get everything back together. It's, it's spread out. It's gone wild. It's viral. It's, it's viral now. It's basically viral that uh, uh, Comex is uh, involved with uh, allowing blatant manipulation to happen in their casino, happen in their casino. You know, I'm not the only one saying this. This has been saying, Ted Butler's been saying this for 30 years now, all right? So again, he's the godfather of this, uh, 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 knowing that the markets are manipulated at Comex and how it's done. Uh, but remember, all markets are manipulated. Your whole life is manipulated. The whole key to it is if you don't play, you can't win. You'll be a big loser. Uh, you won't go far. Uh, or you can learn how the game is played, learn how it's rigged, and uh, learn how to beat them at their own game. That's what we're doing, folks. Physical is the way to beat them at their own game. Uh, give me one second. A little sip of coffee. Hmm. Uh, so... Uh, quite specifically to the blatant comic silver manipulation, and said, and, and Ted quite uh, uh, correctly points out little explosion of independent internet commentary. They can't stop this, folks. It's, it's again, the cat's out of the bag. All right. Uh, while some, including gold in the manipulation commentary, there are hardly any similar allegations than commodities, any other commodities or markets. And Ted, again, Ted mostly talks about the manipulation of silver markets, not so much the gold markets, uh, but he does point out that. Uh, uh, that similar things are happening or similar commentary is uh, happening uh, about the gold markets. And in the face and in the face of growing allegations of specific wrongdoings in Comex Silver, the regulators at CFTC, and we're going to get into that, I'm going to show you how to file a complaint, and the CM Group have remained silent instead of addressing their matter head on. Okay? Um, that is the discussion I had with Mr. Eldridge uh, Reddington from the CME Investigations Group, and I'll go into that in a moment. Uh, it is used, used to be that the public accusations of illegality or impropriety against the likes of CME Group or JPM would result in swift and direct legal threats to cease and desist. Um, and I would believe that would be true. If, if, they had, if they were truly not implicit, complicit, or whatever you want to call it, or just uh, 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 ignorant, all right, uh, and I don't think they're ignorant. I think they know what's going on. Uh, yeah, they probably would, and they would have a good case uh, behind them. Uh, but I think that, again, the cat's out of the bag. They, they'd have to go after, you know, uh, a million people. <laughs> I mean, how many Reddit people are out there that talk about this all the time? Was there a couple hundred thousand or two hundred? Anyways, uh, it's cat's out of the bag, man. Even if they, even if they could uh, try to monkey hammer people into not saying anything, um, and even if they could, uh, 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 the cat's out of the bag. It would ju all it would do is create bad press for them to go after uh, uh, commoners and you know people on uh, uh, like myself or other people. It would just cause them really severely bad. It would just uh, cause the problem even worse. What they really need to do is what Ted suggests here. Um, is uh, give me one second. It used to be uh, okay. What Ted says here. What the CFTC really needs to do. I agree one hundred percent. And uh, God, if they were listening right now. Instead of, instead of uh, 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 ignoring it, instead of just not uh, addressing the situation, you need to address this matter. You need to talk about it and change the situation, all right? Um, but apparently, you're not doing anything. You're waiting for the whole thing to implode on you. But anyway, it used to be that public blah, blah, blah. All right, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm repeating myself. Um, no longer is that the case. It seems nothing can induce those accused of wrongdoing and complicity to mount a counter argument, all right? Uh, so basically, Ted says they have no counter argument to it. That's why they're not taking people to court. That's why they're not suing people. Uh, again, uh, really, I think uh, if they did that, even if they tried to do that now just to get people to quiet down, they would just create a bigger nightmare for themselves. That would go viral even worse. All right. All right. Let me move along here. Uh, so a plethora of signs aligned against the most visible and widely followed sign of all the price. Which sign is correct? or stated differently, why is there such a deep conflict between price and all other signs? The best way to judge that, it seems to me, is to examine the mechanics behind each sign. First, let's look at how the signs that disagree with the price sign get formed. Can there be any suggestion that the premiums and delivery delays on retail forms of silver are artificially derived? Okay. Now, Ted makes an excellent point here, is that uh, uh, there are comments out by, there by some people that are really not familiar with how gold and silver retail physical markets work. Uh, oh, it's just greedy dealers. It's greedy dealers. They're not raising their premiums. They're lowering their premiums. Uh, granted, there may be some greedy dealers out there. For the most part, that's not true, though. 
Uh, so it's not a bunch of dealers getting together uh, out there and saying, hey, let's raise premiums and let's make people wait longer for their bullion. That's just not true. So Ted talks about this right there. In other words, is there any credible evidence that retail investors haven't bid up the price of retail silver items? Or conversely, is there any evidence that retail dealers are deliberately holding supplies to create an artificial tight supply situation? No and no. Either suggestion, he points out, what I just said, would be preposterous. Markets with a wide number of participants don't work that way. Uh, so the folks out there that, when, whenever you see a commenter out there saying it's greedy dealers, um, no, I'm sorry, man, that's just a, uh, uh, God, an ignorant comment. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to say, figure a nicer way to say that, but it's true. Uh, how about the suggestion that silver mining companies are just pretending to be suffering from low silver prices and are secretly making massive process, uh, profits at current prices that are publicly and illegally misreporting to shareholders for some, again, uh, that's preposterous as well, as Ted points out. And, uh, you know, as he says here, silver miners along among all commodity producers are suffering from unusually low silver prices. Silver miners want higher prices if they haven't pre-sold all their stuff and they're not hedged or they have extra production they can make. Why wouldn't they want it? Uh, I can almost understand the skepticism that the growing amount of public commentary about silver price uh, being nothing more than a broad consensus being wrong about a market. After all, I'm a contrarian at heart, and I'm deeply suspicious when the crowd strongly agrees on something. But this is different in that in the past, the crowd always became uniformly bullish after prices have risen sharply. Uh, and Ted is very uh, astute pointing it out. This is the first time in history, I believe, where there is nearly uniform bullishness on silver long before prices rose, all right? Even in a falling market, uh, 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 people are, sc are scooping up physical gold and silver folks in a falling market they're not selling so this is completely ass backwards and if, if you read a superman comic book that it would be called bizarro world all right and that's not what it is the truth of the matter is is the price is rigged it's set it's it, the price of silver is not being set by anyway he's going to get into this how about the suggestion of 500 million ounces of silvers weren't really bought and deposited into the world's silver etfs now this is where ted talks about you know, I believe Ted uh, understands that there is silver back in the ETFs. Uh, but let's move, uh, well, let me read what he says. Uh, and those ETFs are simply pretending and falsely misre misreporting such purchases. Come on, man, where do we draw the line at all the signs of strong investor man and not net selling? But if you look at one sign in conflict with all the other signs. Here I'm talking about the same thing I always talk about, the corrupt pricing of silver in comics where the price of silver is set. A relative handful of financial institutions, mostly banks for the past, and, and this is where this, you want to know, if you want to copy this right here, uh, again, this is basically what I've got highlighted here. This is what you can tell the CFTC, one of the things you can, you can tell them, all right? Uh, a relative handful of financial institutions, mostly banks for the past 40 years have colluded with each other in selling short aggressively in sufficient enough quantities whenever silver prices rose to cap and contain all silver rallies. After the rallies were capped, the principal buyers on those rallies, the managed money technical funds have exhausted their buying power, would begin to sell. At that point, okay, at that point, the collusive and the fraudulent, in my opinion, uh, commercial short sellers would grease the price skids lower through a var variety of dirty trading tricks, uh, including, in my belief, spoofing markets, including uh, selling large amounts or enough silver in the evening markets to hit the stops like on Globex, like I suspected might have happened uh, in the last couple of weeks, but I digress. Let me read what Ted says here. Short sellers would grease the price skids through a variety of dirty trading tricks and buy back their shorts at a profit, the old wash, rinse, and repeat. This has been going on for years. Comics has done nothing about it. Uh, I mean, CME Group has nothing about uh, 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 reigning in this type of manipulative behavior. Uh, and Ted's absolutely right about this. So considering how all the signs are pointing to an extremely physical tightness in silver don't seem to have come about by some com convoluted reason other than silver prices being too low. While the price setting process in the comics is demonstrably uh, uh, corrupt, it seems clear that the plethora of signs pointing to tightness are telling a real story and not the most visible sign of price. Um, and we're almost through this, folks. I'm sorry to mean to read all this to you, but I think it was pretty important to do. Uh, give me one second. Yes, it's unfortunate that regulars have blown the opportunity to do the right thing many years. Uh, and the regulators were going to be the CFTC, uh, which is uh, their CME group you can file. There's the CFTC you can file a complaint with right there. Um, 
uh, have blown the opportunity to do the right thing for many years, decades ago, and cracked down on the manipulated price cream in comics, but that's on them, and the water largely under the bridge. What lies ahead is reckoning based upon higher regulatory authority, I mean higher regulatory authority, namely the immutable law of supply and demand. Uh, again, something we've talked about for a long time, folks, is they, they can try to manipulate gold and silver, but you remember, ultimately, uh, supply and demand on the physical, the physical which is the dog and the paper markets which are the tail. The dog will start wagging the tail again at some point. Uh, prices kept too long, too low for too long must result in a physical shortage, period. Uh, pinpointing in advance the exact timing of the shortage is generally beyond human capacity, but it's not inevitability. Uh, it is the inevitability of physical silver shortage that should be focused on the best way to ensure one doesn't miss profiting from the equally inevitable and inevitable price, upswing in price is to be placed, oh, I'm sorry, oh my, I got a little, let me get a sip of coffee here, get a little dry there. Mm. Sorry, Ted, Ted, didn't mean to botch your thing here. <laughs> Shortages should be focused on the best way to ensure one doesn't miss profiting uh, from the equally inevitable upswing of prices to be in place and holding silver before the shortage becomes obvious. Uh, which most of you that are watching these videos and are, go on YouTube and watch silver videos and Wall Street silver apes, most of you guys know and ladies know this already. Uh, fortunately, the easiest way to ensure participation is to be holding physical silver. Not a particularly difficult thing to do if you block out the daily noise and take advantage of the phony pricing. Buying and holding and then waiting for the inevitable physical shortage is as simple as falling off a log, providing one doesn't get caught up too closely with the daily exposure of the phony price. Again, don't get caught up in these days. I've told you this for a long time, folks. It's just a great opportunity to buy the dips. Uh, that's me saying that, not Ted. As well as holding the right form of silver, please be aware of digital silver investment schemes. Oh, from his lips to your God, <laughs> to, to, to your ears, folks. That's absolutely true. Avoid these digital silver investment schemes. I'm not going to say any names, but absolutely. It's all a matter of time, uh, a matter of reading the signs correctly. Uh, this you can read for free. Uh, sorry to make you dizzy there. This is Ted Butler, just recently written. I, I, I suggest you read it one more time for yourself. Uh, just type in uh, uh, sign, sign everywhere, Ted Butler, Butler Research. Again, it's a free one that you can read, and uh, Ted nails it right here, folks. Well, Ted also, uh, uh, oh, I told you I got a call from, uh, Ted gives you some good information that you can use when you fill out the a CFTC form, if you want to. That's just, you know, my suggestion, although, you know, uh, uh, you, you know, my opinion is everyone should do this. Everyone should be uh, uh, vigilant when it comes to their money and, and manipulative practices. We should be calling and, and, you know, you don't have to necessarily be correct about it. You know, we could be wrong possibly. I highly doubt it. Uh, but no less, they've said nothing. They did nothing. Uh, and we need answers, folks. It's cost small investors and miners millions and millions and billions of dollars over the years to have these uh, large commercial banks uh, monkey hammer and manipulate markets like they, they have. And the truth of the matter is, is, is the CFTC, they sent me a letter back saying, what's your proof? I sent them some things and I never heard back from them. So I figured the CFTC, and I'm going to just say this outright, they're either complicit or they're inept, uh, one or the other. They're either involved with it. Uh, directly and they don't want to address it or they're just too stupid to figure it out. And when it comes to uh, government agencies, the fact that Bernie Madoff got away with what he did, regulators would go to his office and have lunch and smoke fat cigars with the dude and do nothing, all right? He used to, th he used to say, he said frequently that when a regulator would show up at his office, he would think this is it. Then he'd find out they were fucking inept. So I figure that CFTC is two things. They're either inept, which is highly probable given it's a government institution, or they're, they're, they're involved with it, one or the other. Uh, God, if they're involved with it, they need to go down as well. I don't know who you're gonna call on them, but fill out the CFTC complaint form, send them complaints, flood their department with complaints, um, and be, be polite, don't be nasty, you know, be polite about it, uh, and fill in uh, what's going on, uh, that you got big commercial banks on the COMEX market uh, 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 colluding. You know what I suggest? Read Ted's uh, article here again, down here, he explains exactly what it is. Um, and then uh, put it in your own words there. But, you know, file a complaint, man. If you're sick of it, file a complaint. That's your right as a uh, uh, U.S. citizen to file complaints with these uh, uh, places. Again, be polite. You know, don't tell them they're an app. Don't tell them that they're involved with it. Uh, again, that's my opinion, folks. So, you know, make your own opinion. But uh, be polite when you do these things, okay? We don't want to look like a bunch of fucking idiots and jerks. <laughs> uh, same thing. File a complaint with the CME group. 
Um, it's, these complaints take like two minutes to file. You know, just make sure you fill out all the blanks. Basically, I'm gonna give you the first one section, describe your complaint. This is what we're looking at. Disruptive or manipulative trading activities in the futures options or swaps market. Uh, primarily, and you can put down here, done by commercial banks who have never held a long position, only short positions, simply to manipulate markets downward. Again, Ted explains it quite good. If you're good at writing, put it down here. Uh, what days, and if you know what time of day, just say it's been occurring for 30 years on a, on a near daily basis. That's your best. Uh, again, you guys are smart. You buy gold and silver. You can figure out how to politely put some stuff in here that, that don't give them a call or at least flood their fucking emails and make them think maybe. Uh, well, same thing with, uh, I was surprised too. I didn't get a call back from CFTC. Uh, again, I did get a call back from the CME group investigator, uh, Mr. Reddington, who is extremely polite, super nice guy. He's just doing his job, I'm sure, like you know, like some people in the uh, in these departments. So the higher ups is really where the criminal shit takes place, not the lower down employees like Mr. Reddington and the other. They're not involved with it. In fact, uh, they're probably stuck having to deal with it. Uh, but no less, uh, keep filing your complaints. Mr. Reddington called me. Uh, super polite, asked me what proof I had. I gave him a bunch of stuff, told him. And really, I was more, I was more uh, 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 talking about how it hurts people and how this has been going on for years. And he says, what direct evidence I had. And I told Mr. Reddington, I said, you guys know this is happening. You know, you know it, it's happening. You've got all the proof you need. You see it happening. And, and, and you know what? I didn't get a response from him. And I can kind of got the feeling that, that they know. They know. They really do. And you know what? If, if they were listening, you guys need to do something, man. You really need to stop that. I know you're making a ton of money off these big commercial short positions. The trades that they do, you make great money on it, but you're screwing people. That's my opinion. All right, well, let me move over to ZH. I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, politics, economics. Let's see what's going on. And, and again, folks, this is up to you. I'm not telling you you need to do this. I'm not telling you you have to do this, but if you're just sick of it like I was, do, you know, this is what I did. I, I filed complaints, okay? Uh, again, just my opinion. Um, and a good way to handle it. Again, be super polite if you're going to do it. Um, let's take a look at ZH and see what's going on here. Rate, rising rates, um, enter, transitory power had to act. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just uh, do my quick uh, snarky comments. <laughs> business as usual, despite this right here. Yeah, it's business as usual. And as I said, uh, the business of the uh, Fed and the business of uh, economics in the United States and the global economy sucks. It's been going downhill for a long time. They will blame it on this and, or the other critter, the original critter they'll blame it on. But the truth of the matter is, is it is the fault of the Federal Reserve and central banks worldwide. It is the fault of governments who don't know how to properly run their own economic household. It's their fault. They screwed the whole system up, not this, not the critter they did, okay? They will use the critter in this as an excuse why things are screwed up, but the truth of the matter is, these people fucked us, all right? Not this thing. And again, that's my opinion. Uh, Tesla plunges under 1,000 after Reuters reports, Reuters reports ongoing ICC over defective solar panels. Tesla, you know, when Tesla takes a big dump, man, there's a lot of people that are heavily invested in Tesla. Um, you know, and I think uh, Uber fans, you know, people that are fans, you got to be careful being a fan. Sometimes the person you're a fan of or the entity that you're a fan of can take you down with them. And sometimes it's not even their fault. But no less, I mean, like this, SEC. It's not Tesla's fault. It's SEC, the probe. Now, maybe they did something wrong, which it would be SEC's fault, I mean, Tesla's fault. But uh, just because, a, you know, a probe, just simply mentioning that someone's being probed or investigated can really destroy a career and destroy a company. So, uh, you know, if, if they did indeed do it, sure. If they didn't, eh, oh, well. Uh, I'm going to move along here. Uh, yeah, like we didn't know this right here already. Uh, fucking people. I mean, really, you know, they, they think we're stupid. I'm sorry. And this is why uh, Florida is filling up with New Yorkers right here. My God, every other plate down here is a fucking New York tag. Hey, I love you, New Yorkers. Don't get me wrong. I'm just like, it's a shame that you have to flee your own place, man, because you know, the beauty of Florida is everything is open, man. I went to a diner yesterday, Michael's Diner in uh, uh, Pompano Beach, man. It's a small, tiny place. And, uh, you know, again, no mandates, no, uh, uh, no paper bags over their heads. <laughs> uh, nobody was, uh, uh, a lot of old folks, too. I was really surprised. So, uh, and the same thing, our, our restaurants are open, our businesses are open. We are thriving in Florida, literally thriving. And the real estate prices are ridiculous right now. 
Uh, I love this state. I, don't re I didn't realize uh, how well we're being governed, but uh, we really are. Uh, we're lucky. I'm lucky to live in Florida. So, and by the way, before you move down here, just get rid of your politicians and stay home. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a selfish thing to say. Uh, but no wonder, this doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, these draconian, uh, all right, I'm not going to get into it. The officials and government people up there are, oh my God. Uh, draconian would be a good word to use. Uh, what else is another good word? Uh, uh, all right, I'm not going to go there. All right, let me move along here. Um, some good articles here. By the way, this is Zero Hedge. I recommend you read this. Evergrande dollar bond pukes. I think we uh, expected that. Uh, futures tumble. Not too much in precious metals. Good article down here. Davis is, make, Davis is making sure the central bank case for gold. In fact, uh, suggested reading. I'm not going to call it Homer because uh, it was pointed out that nobody likes homework. I didn't like it either. So suggested reading. I like this guy a lot. Uh, Tom Lungo via Gold Goats and Guns. He says uh, they're making central bank. Uh, Davis is making the central bank case for gold. And a wonderfully written article here. You can find it on ZH for free, or you can go right to. Well, I guess you can't go right to his site. Uh, good article. Suggested reading for the day. Uh, highly suggest you read this article again. Just type in this. Uh, 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 headline right here, and it'll pop up on ZH or on his own website. Again, like what he writes all the time. Uh, he throws out a few F-bombs as well, so got to respect that. <laughs> um, all right, uh, much cleaner. Well, you know what? I'm going to just call it right now. Let's go over to uh, Friday's video, which I got out extremely late. I'm sorry. I should know better than trying to film something on my uh, 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 camera, my uh, f camera phone. Uh, it's not so much that uh, the camera is an issue. Uploading, gosh darn, uploading, and I dropped my camera several times. If you watch my video on Friday, the reason it's so choppy is I literally dropped the phone and dropped the camera uh, quite a few times, made a whole bunch of mistakes. So I'd like to thank my uh, editor, video editor, Marcelo, for uh, uh, fixing Friday's video, even though we got it up super late. Thanks for watching, folks. I'm going to answer a few questions here. I'm going to sort by uh, newest comment first and go down here. Again, I'm going to look specifically for questions. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge everyone here that watches my video. Um, uh, I just can't, uh, again, talk about everything here. Uh, let me go down here. Ooh, okay. Uh, gold eagles have silver and copper alloy. Krugerans have copper but no silver in the alloy. Uh, yeah, I kind of did know that. It's just when you're doing a video, you really don't think about stuff sometimes. But uh, yeah, I know that uh, gold has uh, 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 U.S. gold has a little bit of silver in it. It'll, the color is slightly different, uh, but it is, again, very close in color and tone uh, to eagles, uh, uh, Krugerrands are. And uh, the, the reason that KRs are a little more coppery color is because it's mostly copper. Uh, again, I forgot to mention that they do put a little bit of silver in American eagles. Uh, let's take a look here what we got going on. Uh, you can get new cuckoo barrels for less than five bucks per. That's a good deal, actually, for cuckoo barrels. Um, always, again, for five bucks less than eagles. Well, I don't, not sure what that is. Uh, my whole thing is, I just think if you're paying more than four, or four dollar premium per ounce on silver, it's just too much right now, folks. Um, thank you for watching, uh, Gold Addict. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your comment. Let me. I didn't really, really. Re oh, okay. You just had a little more there. Uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And thanks for your comments, especially. Uh, great video, great food for thought. As long as reputable 99 and silver is 99, screw the U.S. Mint products. I agree with you. Uh, Body Eagles well under $400 a tube. Yep, I was there too. And, uh, you know, Silver Eagles used to be spot plus three bucks. You know, granted, uh, generic silver was spot plus a dollar and a quarter at the time. Uh, still, much more reasonable at spot plus three dollars. But on the other hand, too, silver was 10 to 12 bucks an ounce. Three bucks is almost 30% at 10 bucks an ounce. So, was it a great deal even then? I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for the comments on my tank. Uh, don't shrink wrap your bars, Celeste. Don't worry about it. Actually, the patina is desirable some, to some degree. It shows that it's real silver. Silver colors a certain particular way uh, that's attractive. And uh, actually, when you're a dealer and you see a, a, a silver bar with patina on it, you can actually tell from the patina whether it's a real silver bar or not. Uh, somewhat, okay? Uh, maybe not on a 100-ounce bar that was drilled and filled with tungsten, but gosh, I don't think I've ever seen one of those in person. Thanks for watching, Celeste. Uh, I would agree. Lots of good product out there. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, <laughs> Silver Eagles are overpriced. Uh, what, let's see. JM Spot Silver 22. 36. To, hey, thanks, Blind Sheba, for doing the little work there. If you're taking a look at the American Seabills, 36 bucks per ounce. Uh, and obviously, 
uh, uh, Australia, and even the kookaburra, kangaroos are a better deal at 16 16.6%. .6 Look at that premium, 60% premium. That's just insane on silver eagles. Who the F would buy something with a 60% uh, premium? Um, it looks like even the Canadian, by the way, I got Canadian silver maple leaves uh, cheaper than that, not 21s, but uh, different dates, temporarily while I still have them. Uh, you're absolutely right, man. That's, uh, thanks for that information, Blind Shiva. And um, yep, thank you. I've tried these, they're really cool. I'm just not able to get them in any kind of quantity to sell to customers. Thanks for mentioning those, Jason. Uh, what are my thoughts on Carson City coins at the moment? Are the premiums too high or buy at the moment? Uh, you forget to mention U.S. Buffaloes. Buffaloes, I think, are more reasonable priced. Uh, uh, I mean, not reasonable. They're about the same as Gold Eagles, so hmm, maybe a little higher. I'm not sure what availability is, though, uh, so I can't tell you that. But, you know, I like Buffaloes. They're kind of a cool design, but it doesn't matter to me what design is on them. The premium is all that's important to me, Mike. Hey, thanks for watching. Good to see you posting as well, sir. I hope you're well and happy holidays. Uh, Hagger, how you doing? Thank you for the nice compliments. And uh, if a person can buy numismatic foreign coins for only a melt plus 30, wouldn't it make the sense to buy just those in case the unlikely chance of confiscation? No, I, I don't say that for confiscation purposes. I just say it that, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Give me one second here. Go back here. Uh, I did not bring that up for confiscation purposes. I brought that up uh, simply because, you know, if gold is at $10,000 an ounce and you don't want to sell a full ounce, you just want to sell a couple grand worth, it's nice to have those smaller increments, okay? Uh, but as far as confiscation goes, I just don't ever see gold confiscation happening in our lifetime. It would amount to theft, and uh, they wouldn't raise much money. You know, a vast majority of Americans don't own gold. They'd have to go door to door to the people that did, and it wouldn't be worth the effort, for sure. On top of that, uh, oh, of course they could say you have to turn in your gold, but you know what? Governments are getting to such a point where their credibility and their uh, 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 people respecting them is so nil that I don't think... New Jersey, when they put that uh, law that you couldn't have a, a clip, you know, that contained more than so many bullets and that you had to turn your clips into, uh, you know, local police departments. You know how many people in New Jersey turned in their high capacity clips? Maybe five. <laughs> I don't know. Very few. That's what happens when, when governments lose credibility. People stop listening to them. So people wouldn't listen to them about uh, uh, like getting rid of their gold and silver. So all they could do, and they couldn't come in and steal records from dealers and stuff, uh, I'd destroy mine if, they, if that was the case. If they're going to go confiscate people, they're not going to get my customers' names. That's for sure. If they're going to steal people's gold. But no less, uh, th th let me tell you why confiscation is such bullshit. It is because they don't need to confiscate. You know all they need to do? is tax your pension fund, tax your house, tax your bank account, tax every purchase you make, all right? With a stroke of a pen, they could raise far more money than they could ever raise uh, confiscating gold. And besides, the other point that Peter Schiff made a long time ago, we're no longer on the gold standard. It, it would be theft. Why would they need gold? They had the excuse back then, during uh, Roosevelt's time, that we were on the gold standard and they needed to have people turn their gold in. They don't have that excuse no more, so it would be theft and on top of that, it would be way too costly. And, and again, why would they do that when with the stroke of a pen they can steal everything you have? Uh, hey, thanks for watching all you folks, uh, Demon. And thanks for that comment, P.S. And uh, Michael, yep, better late than never. Uh, boy, I didn't realize that your premiums in Panama were so crazy. That is insane a little bit. An extra 5% more than what you pay. Uh, sorry to hear that. nice thing is, uh, if you live in Panama, Glenn, uh, U.S. citizen, you can come back here and buy the gold, fly into Miami, I'll sell you a better price. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Glenn. Um, I have not seen those videos, but uh, I'm going to take a look at it when I get a chance. Thanks for mentioning that ZZYZRDFYW15. Uh, uh, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, Zipper fix, thank you very much. Uh, the Ombres is different. Take a look. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, own nothing to be happy. And uh, Thornton says eagles are always overpriced at the moment of initial purchase. Not really. Eagles have always been overpriced. As I said earlier here, when eagles were, uh, when silver was 10 bucks an ounce, eagles were still bringing a $3 premium. That's 30%. Uh, now they're apparently 60%, but even 30% was too high. I think when the eagles were bringing $3 over spot, the, uh, 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 what was, uh, 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 generics were probably a buck and a quarter over retail. So they were always too high, sir. Uh, gold pandas, uh, some gold pandas aren't fake. A uh, vast majority of gold pandas that you see out there with legitimate dealers are real. If you are buying uh, from eBay, then yeah, uh, not just gold pandas are probably fake, but the rest of your gold coins may be fake if you bought off eBay. Again, that's not saying everything on eBay. That's just saying you're more likely to get burned if you're not buying from professional dealers. And uh, what's this right here? Let me read this one. 
A couple minuses. You aren't buying from Florida Mints. You don't practice what you preach. <laughs> uh, the, okay, yeah, I answered that last night. The prices you gave for foreign gold are horrible. You only claim to beat the most expensive seller in the business. I don't think you're a bad guy, but yeah, I don't think you're a bad guy either. <laughs> More than a touch hypocritical. You don't show any uh, ass high. <laughs> okay, a uh, C high, whatever. Look, I you know, we sold it here. Here's my reply. Rather than go into a long rant. Uh, yes, sir, we have purchased and sold their product. I have seen their product. We've had, I think they're 100-ounce bars, I believe, 10-ounce uh, bars, and some of their 1-ounce bars. Uh, and uh, we do buy it. it. You know, if I can buy their product at a reasonable level, I absolutely will. Reasonable is the key. And if it's available, there's two big problems we're having right now, reasonable and availability. Uh, you know, and I've got to supply customers, and that's an important factor, not just what I would prefer to buy or where I'd prefer to buy. Um, and also, my comments on buying local applies to local retailers, not a handful, mind you, a handful of uh, uh, national wholesalers, and that's true, or national mints. There's only a handful out there, sir, very few of them. So your point kind of ignores this. Uh, and again, I always say buy local, it's, and if you listen to more than one video of mine, you've heard me say many times that, uh, you know, buy local, not just, you know, uh, uh, bars and, and coins, but buy uh, whether it's tires or jewelry. Try to buy it local first if you can. Keep that money in the local retailers, all right? Now, as far as uh, 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 wholesalers, I didn't say go to your wholesale, you know, you know uh, have your local retail tire guy uh, uh, buy only Florida tires. You know, that's a it's ridiculous. And again, I kind of get your point, but I think you're missing the bigger point there and you're missing the true story of availability out there. Uh, I appreciate your comment though. Uh, the prices I gave for foreign gold, because you mentioned foreign gold was too high, are standard retail prices online at competitive local stores. Not uh, sure where you got your data on prices, and that's true. I'm not sure where you got your data on prices, but the prices that I was quoting, for example, um, basically what I did, if I remember, if a French 20 franc cost me wholesale, the gold price plus 15 bucks. All I did was add another 15 and said it's plus 30. Uh, I'm sure 15 bucks is, is not too much of a profit for you, sir. Uh, again, profit is not a dirty word. Uh, so I really don't know where you got your prices from as far as, uh, uh, you know, eBay. Uh, maybe uh, you got a great local source. And if that's true, wonderful, man. Uh, I get that. And that's cool. I've always said if you can buy them cheaper than what I'm telling you, can do it. Just make sure it's real and it's from a legit dealer. That's the important thing. So I'm not against a good deal. <laughs> um, and what I said here is I get my prices from national wholesalers. As far as who I claim to beat, if you watch my videos more than once, nearly verbatim, I say I advertise to beat the three largest and most reputable dealers online. Uh, not most reputable dealers, but the top reputable dealers, which is Atmax, JM, and SD. Those are the three big 800-pound gorillas. Those are the guys. If I had to go out and look for every Frickin' reseller that sold gold online, I'd be selling at a negative uh, premium price because there, you know, you could go out there and find. Again, you want to buy from large or fairly decent sized reputable sources that get their stuff from reputable sources. So I'm not going to tell my people to go out and look for some guy that's got some obscure uh, place uh, selling online out of his garage. Uh, even if he is selling for a buck over spot on silver, okay? I'm just not going to tell people to do that. Buy from re reputable dealers. And there are some reputable dealers that are cheaper than Atmex, S, uh, SD, and JM, like me, and like other dealers, local dealers, uh, but not everyone. Um, and let's see, then we have also stated there are many smaller competitive dealers. Oh, I said that as well online. However, if possible, buy local even if it costs more. And for what it's worth, I think you are a I don't think you are a bad guy either, sir. <laughs> I forgot what I wrote last night. Uh, thanks for watching, at the very least, posting comments. As far as hypocritical, sorry you feel that way. And for what it's worth, even if we don't show it to heaven, we have sold lots of that brand silver. So your assumption was correct. Uh, don't feel bad, Thornley, about your comments, but you are incorrect on some of those. And uh, uh, I hope I explained it in a polite, uh, uh, civil way. And again, thank you for your civil and, and uh, your, your comments. Your comments, again, that was honest. So I got to admit, you, you said you, your comments were honest at what you were feeling, uh, but I believe you are incorrect, sir. Uh, Ham Ops, have a nice day too, and thanks for commenting. Ham Ops 78 says, buying 99 coins that have no segments in history, like the founder of an organization, at two bucks over spot. Yeah, at spot plus two bucks, I don't care if it says Mother's Day 1972, it's silver. Now granted, when you go to sell it, it's not gonna be as popular on a retail level, uh, but your price point getting in is good. So, you know, at plus two dollars, yeah, why not? Again, who cares what it says on it as long as it's real? I don't care when it comes to silver personally. Um, you know, when it comes, to me, silver is silver. If, if I got something that was an ugly, if I got a piece of silver that was in the shape of a turd, <laughs> 
uh, even uh, spray painted like a turd. Um, and someone offered to me for spot plus, you know, a dollar or a spot or something like that. Uh, again, I'm exaggerating a little bit on the price, but I'd buy it if the price was right. I don't give a crap what color it is, and as long as it's silver and it's real. Um, thanks for watching. Yeah, I would buy it, uh, Hammett78. And uh, hey, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Uh, please hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you haven't before. I appreciate you watching my videos. And uh, oh, there I am playing with coins again. <laughs> And uh, that's really about it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811. I advertise to be at Max SD and JM Bullion. Um, and uh, uh, for their, for their uh, lower, more, uh, 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 pri you know, the lower price products, I will, will beat them on. I don't like to carry the, the higher end products. I'll still beat them on Silver Eagles because I got plenty of them left here. Uh, but. Uh, uh, and there's nothing wrong with those companies. I'm just, and again, like the gentleman said before, are there some cheaper companies out there? Yeah, just make sure that, you know, they've been around, they know what they're doing, uh, and they're not selling out of their garage or something like that. Not saying garage people are bad, but really when it comes to gold and silver, it's very, very important to make sure that uh, you're getting it from good sources. Hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day. Make sure you uh, fill out those complaint forms if you desire to do so. And uh, that's really about it. Talk to you tomorrow, and uh, let's see what happens today. Bye.